Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, at home. Uh, it is Thursday, September 12th. This is the Council Rock School District Facilities Committee, committee agenda. My name is Ed Salomon, School Board uh, Director. I'm filling in for Dr. Thorward, who's at the back of the school right now. Um, I'm going to start going to my right around the table with everybody who's here. Please uh, introduce yourself. Council Rock School Board, Chris Martin. Go ahead. Go School board. I will be leaving for back to school night too, but I wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay, thanks, thank you, director. Chuck Lambert, director of special services. Carl Fetzer, district resident. Larry yeah, Key, school board. Andy Black, school board. Okay, good morning, Mr. Gell. Thank you. So, uh, two quick things. I'm going to go through the presentation in its entirety and then turn it over to Michael Bell, who's going to uh, talk further about the uh, star Center or Star Center, Council Rock Star Center, so we'll talk about that as well. The camera is here only because when Mike does the presentation, it won't be part of the, of the connection that has at his desk. It will be presented from this kiosk, so to capture it on the uh, screen tonight, the camera is here that I was discussed while we see a camera in the room. Uh, we're not in any way to sleep otherwise. So, uh, it's a pretty full agenda. I'm going to go through it uh, quickly. Energy management update. Um, we, we've done well. Um, the uh, basically the monthly reporting has been updated to reflect the middle schools that are back uh, back in action. Right now, it's been removed, but it'll be back up now. It is uh, occupied again. Rolling bills have been removed from the report, and the 12 month report is on here. This is just to kind of show where we've been in the last year. I think it's nice to see we were uh, back to the old baseline before um, it was changed and they put new matrices, uh, metrics in for us, uh, which really hurt our numbers. Uh, we were doing very well with the Energy Star score. Then they made the changes to their scoring, but we continue to kind of climb from 56 back up to 67. Uh, we're working on it. Um, we're at 90 cents a square foot, which is a real good number. You can see we continue to kind of uh, reduce in that world. Um, so we're in pretty good shape. The energy intensity, uh, which is 80 per square foot, is good. So we're, we're performing well and we're maintaining good numbers. The energy stock score will change as time goes on. So you can see we're at the 90 cents. Um, also, uh, some managing the demand response program that we used to manage here uh, going back maybe seven years. Um, the payments aren't as good as they once were. They modified the program and reduced the payments, but I think it's still worthwhile. We're seeing um, about $36,000 each year uh, for participating in demand response. That's money earned. We don't uh, get penalized if we don't meet the account. We just don't see the payments. So uh, it's been about once a year they call us. We haven't had any uh, repayments during the school year in the last couple of years. It's just been a test. Uh, we go through the buildings, we show our repayment, and before doing that, um, we receive that paycheck. It basically allows us to provide energy for air conditioning and you know, residential units around our school district when there's high demand days. So uh, we're, we're being green, we're being good to our community, and we're being paid for that. So, we're going to look at um, possibly adding new town hall and good note and town hall since they've been renovated, since they have more glass than they used to have, and it'd be good candidates for this. So, we're going to send some electric bills over to um, NLX. They're going to do some, uh, take a quick look at what our payment might be if those buildings were included to see if we can't collect a little more money each year for this. Security update, uh, I think the, um, the grant is still out for the video income systems. I don't think all have seen a response to that yet. Right. Um, and some of the other um, security uh, work that's in place, we got the trade loans and response guide is completed. 
frigid monitor upgrades um, has been completed. We're working on punch lists throughout the five buildings. We're finding out which pieces of hardware in different buildings are problematic. We're addressing those uh, during the evenings and weekends. The security upgrade the Janssen Center has been addressed. We're working on counter maintenance and replacements, ongoing analysis training. Um, the student uh, portion of that will be back in action now that we push it back. The Safety Safe Hunting Program is working. Uh, we've seen several reports already since kids are back. Including uh, one before the school year started. Yes. Yep. And uh, strategic planning does include some security initiatives, so that's something. We've got to bring our uh, team back together and want to start looking at some security measures as a result of that hard work we all So, um, if I may, one of the board members got an inquiry about security related about the use of keys and teachers having keys. Um, I thought that was an interesting question, and uh, your answer was pretty straightforward. Yeah, so there was, there was some misconception in the community that the teacher needed a key to lock their door down from the inside of the intruder in the building. And um, that was once the way we managed lockdowns. Uh, we believe that that was the approach when I first started uh, working in the district um, many years ago. We were using keys, so the teacher would use a key to lock the door from the inside and could be locked from the uh, but it became problematic if the substitutes did not have a key, if the teacher didn't have the key in the pocket, it was problematic. So we switched everything over to push button thumb turns from the inside. And the teacher's key from the outside reopens the door and allows the door to get back in. So uh, we do not use keys after the summer. Many of the buildings that were previously renovated had the keys and they been converted. So a church building that should have had the keys has been converted to thumb prints and push pumps. Everything is that. So great. And those upgrades uh, were part of the <coughs> PCCD grants that were available last year that did those two great course. So we're just working with that? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you know, are easier than others. Building with new hardware that's consistent throughout the building. You can take a cylinder out and put a new cylinder in and get nice hardware. You go to some of the older schools that have all the different kinds of locks of hardware in the buildings. You know, we <coughs> did everything we could to make those work as, as friendly as we could. Uh, but they all have that. There's no more magnets. They pull the magnets off and then the door closes and locks. You can zip it from the inside. Uh, facility improvement projects, just to go through these. Newtown Middle School, I have the last of the change orders for Newtown Middle School on the agenda for the board meeting next week. Um, and that is for the general contractor. It's uh, about $53,000. I have a $53,922.94 for miscellaneous items to close out the projects. And unsuitable soils, there's the asphalt escalation uh, costs that we uh, build into the contracts. So those are the final items. You'll see um, most of these contracts closed the end mechanical under 114 credit back, 114,000, about 30,000 back from the plumber, 20,000 from environmental, a small amount for the electrician. And it's a sizable, appears to be a sizable number for the GC. But if you remember, there was a change order for 417,000 to add green lane to that project. This green lane was in poor shape. So the bigger part of that number was Green Lane. Um, it, if you take that into consideration, in order to have a piece of work that wasn't in the project, we would have been about 96,000 below budget for all the contracts. So um, even with that, we're less than 1% in change orders for a sizable project. And we still have a good bit of the 2.2 million in contingency and about 900,000 for furniture, fixture, and equipment. So, we got about three million dollars roughly coming back on the problem. So we're, we did very well. And tribute to you guys. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you, yeah. you said uh, traffic pumps on the driveways. Was that part of your project? Was that just uh, Some of that was just work that wasn't completed uh -huh. from the summer. Yeah, good. Yeah. <clears throat> 
on middle school, uh, there's still two items that we're working on. One is most of it is uh, we had HVAC issues there. You remember last year we had uh, temperature issues in the building. Uh, it was getting warm. We had to move some kids around in the building because of the discomfort. But that has been addressed. We identified the issues, and now we're just working on resolving the cost to address those issues with respect to parking. So um, I hope not to be back in front of you with that and try to work that out. We still have the stormwater runoff from the rain garden um, at Holland Middle School that accesses the neighboring community below. We need to get the conservation district closed out and we can do some things to address that. But right now, until we get official closed out from the township, it's you know a little touchy for us to kind of not pop that. So we will uh, take care of it. Right Sound Elementary School is complete. I think the only thing that really was outstanding when we talked about this um, for kids came back was the library. And we did indeed get the library ready for kids before they did return to school. So this is a picture before they were back, uh, ready to go. Um, otherwise, uh, they had a successful uh, start to the school year there. I think that's going to tell you it's going very well. Um, Work we made is to sign your location, We're waiting for a new site sign to come. When that comes, we'll take the old sign out. We're going to use that sign internally, uh, put some additional markings on it to direct buses one way, visitors another. So we'll still have function and use of that sign. And the, the uh, other sign will be placed where the sign currently is. The electrician owns some uh, lighting there to illuminate the sign. There's some landscaping that we own around it. So all that will happen. Any EPA on that new sign or not sort of? Um, trying to get it before the back to school or before the uh, dedication happens. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was going to be nice. nice. We're close. Yeah. I, just don't know. I think we'll have the sign and we'll get anything else associated with the sign. But we're working on uh, And then we'll, we'll get a final penalty of the, uh, of the budget in case on that. There's still contingency money for me. Um, rolling mills, this building uh, project is very exciting. This building will transform much like the Hopkins Mill School did. We do have first and foremost the rolling mills now temporarily living at the former Richburg Middle School, so this is become their home. And uh, work in place, we tied in the new sanitary line to uh, Holland and uh, Old Jordan Road, so that's uh, taking care of the streets that are not interrupting buses. Um, we're thinking about the Toronto floors and the costs associated with that. We didn't accept initially. Maybe coming back and considering putting that back in the project with some of the monies we have as part of the project. But until we do, uh, we want to make sure um, a couple other construction issues we will have the money. We want to spend money that we may not have later. So we did encounter a uh, 35 foot by 10 foot tank. Um, <coughs> Below, below ground, which wasn't on the initial drawing. And then you hear at the very back of the 1970s plumbing drawings, there was an offer to put in a uh, sanitary holding tank on the site. The drawings is void on it. And did a utility locator um, a guy come in before we started the design and identify all the site utilities on the drawing. This was not identified on that drawing. Uh, so it's time cap for it, sir. No, it's full, of, it's full of rather clear water, so we're encouraged that it's not oil. We don't have to worry about any contaminated soils or anything like that. We did a water dip today. We're getting the water tested. As soon as that comes back, we'll come up with a plan just to address it. But um, we're hoping for the best. There's only one utility that actually crosses it. It is a sanitary line, so we have to, we have to work with it, you know, to be positive soil. Um, and then the other issue we had here was sort of the existing roof structure. We took the roof off. It's a cast in place concrete structure. When they poured that existing roof, there are areas that, that have uh, not structural deflection, but areas of, of pools that would hold water up to four inches. So if you put a new roof on it, all it's going to do is telegraph what's below. And at the end of the day, we'll have pulling and ponding and rain the roof in. It's just not acceptable. So we changed the roof uh, design of the new roof to a uh, lightweight insulated concrete uh, process. So it's a 
pyramidal sloped uh, equipped bridges or insulation in the pyramidal when you just pour this like a concrete over it. It'll help us overcome those, those battles. And it looks like the semicon flows to a lot of what we already know, but there could be a little bit of extra money. So, way to get all that together. Once we get all that, I'll back to that one of the other issues. So, um, the work is progressing. I'll show you a couple of shots here. The monster schedule we're meeting all the milestones that we have in place at this point. This was once a gym. The stage was built in here. And if you remember, we're taking these walls out, taking this out, and that's how we're increasing the size of the gym and length. We're putting a new stage on the outside. So that's been addressed. All the new electrical utilities coming from Home Shore and Road uh, are being installed. This is the uh, cafeteria um, side of the building with additions going on. Structural seal arrived for those additions, and you can see the structural seal is actually being erected here. Uh, again, you can see, see that progress. This is on the roof, these are the light monitors that we talked about to provide daylight into the middle of this building. I believe they really want to put sidelights all over the building because they have a tendency over time. To leak, so by uh, providing these vertical walls with windows, you have better performing uh, methods of getting daylight through the building. At the same time, those slope roofs, the back slope of those, are where some of our solar panels go. So, the southern face would be a nice ability to put the panels on those. And because this flat roof is between two of those areas, sloping here and sloping here, this middle section is where a lot of our mechanical equipment goes on the roof, so the neighbors won't see all of that mechanical equipment. So we get the benefit of natural light, the benefit of solar panels, and screening of equipment through the small wall together. Works out well. These are some other monitors that provide daylight into an art library, and other space as well. Else. So we get some natural light in the middle of our building. Here you can come inside and see how that feels and how it will feel. This is the area that was once outdoor uh, over on the space that we said we could capture as, as planned space. Here you can see the new foundation, the stone, and this will be a line of classrooms, all of exterior windows to get daylight. So now we're introducing daylight to the classroom. So it was nice to have the space. You already had a roof built, uh, structure in place, so why not? This is the new addition. This is where you used to come in the building. Uh, we're going to have a more prominent. Uh, Elevation here is you know, vertical element. In addition, the offices are here, but we'll see all the, the buses coming in. And this is our tank that we have. So, what we thought we found at first was just a slurry of concrete that maybe they threw some of the concrete in the slot when they built the original building. But as they, they pecked away, uh, eventually they found the top of a tank. And you can see the tank, we drilled a hole, we found out it's empty deep and full. But most of these just But we have uh, a new site utility that comes right through. So if all goes well, we're going to cut the top of this tank open where the utility goes. Um, look to fill this with a, with a like a slurry of concrete, a, a, a flowable concrete fill, and they keep the section open with crushed stone. Run our new utilities through it. And leave it in place. This doesn't make sense to take a very tough one hang out. It's not in the way of anything other than this utility. So. <clears throat> and this, this is just the location of it and the detail. The void of drawing in 1971, which we, we didn't think we got an issue, but we did. Um, so, Limestone is coming along, <laughs> working on the, the design. We have five weekly design team meetings. We had a meeting yesterday. Um, we continue to push through all of the submittals, submissions to the uh, government authorities. We have an initial submission in Penza relative to what we have to do on the Eagle Road. Um, we have a meeting with our kitchen consultant, the charter box, to talk about how the kitchen will perform and what we need to do there. <clears throat> We're going to be scheduling October meetings again with all the teachers. Before they left, we met. Um, we get some uh, preliminary info from them, and we're going to get back together and get to a closer, uh, more in depth discussion about what each group needs and has. And we'll work with them on that. We've got a meeting coming up at the end of the month with Dr. Mayfield, our very first meeting, our sketch submission. So things are going well. Um, the budget.
I should know this, but we haven't published anything relative to the designs yet. Right? We're not final. Uh, or, 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 there's one we looked at the main on. That's it, yes. So we have an initial sketch submission, which just is the. That's online under the silly submitting. I've done these masks up here tomorrow, so it's almost like you asked the question. Yes, so there's been no further, uh, no further presentations on the plan, um, just the sketch plan. As soon as we have uh, a good understanding of, of the utilities and phasing, if the plan works the way we hope, we'll develop the elevations, and then we'll come back and we'll show you guys the elevations and the plans and how all that works and works. So, so the ballpark, what do you think you'll have something that we can show? Probably in another month or two. We have to get together with the teachers yeah. and make sure we're all on the same page with the programs. And then that'll, that'll set the approach and then we can start to talk about vertically who we want things to look like. So from a steady standpoint, we remain kind of on track. We're trying to uh, get this finished as quickly as we can and try to take advantage of this first summer. Um, not that we would see uh, anything major come out of the ground, but we can develop the staging area, the, the new road off of Eagle Road we're going to have in the parking lot that will serve the staging initially. The big thing is, is all the existing utilities coming into the building are exactly what we need to, to put all the new utilities. So we're trying to find a way to to put things near them, around them, temporarily relocate some of the utilities to put new in so they're not losing the next summer trying to tear out and put in at the same time and if the building start that same office. So anything we can do now is that okay. And then the plan still is to build a new section, relocate the kids, and then build a second in a module, right? Correct. Yep, so we're trying to get that first two story piece of flash on way to die. And then that will serve as the swing space as we start to work our way So, the Achieve uh, Song Twilight Facility update. I'm going to touch on this, and then Mike is going to finish this into deep, much more depth when, when I wrap all this up. But uh, we're doing well. We're having a uh, five weekly meeting. We had a very good meeting uh, yesterday. Yesterday, we shot in this team. It was about a four hour meeting, and we Talk a lot about programming. You might show you some of that work today. Um, we'll show you the exterior of the building, and how it looks. And I touched on the village overlay piece. I think the last time we talked about respecting the village overlay requirements. And I think we we wanted to do that. We want to work with the township and to show that. So I want to show you a couple of things on it. The only other thing we really need to discuss is if the building will be called Council Rockstar Center or Andy Plus. Thank you. 
finish out of here slapping the streets. Uh, this one's actually important. We're all working on equipment, including the leather bed, so the container and seal is one of our architectural designs. So you're going to see that the team respected all of those things. Uh, in considering all of that, I think the one piece that was difficult for us to achieve, but mirroring what the library did across the street, is putting our parking lot to the side of the building or behind the building. Um, and primarily because of the concern from the township from the get go was, hey, let's not do free space, we need these fields. So by putting the parking lot in the front and allowing us space on the side, we still maintain two athletic fields next to this building. Um, by you know, uh, this one piece of the uh, reply. And I think at the end of the day, we've already talked to them briefly that when you're already was across the street, you see that positive feedback. So they need to touch it. Oh, you should go back to this one. This firm would not be bad about compromising the human playfields. So we're going to lose some playfields, or we would have had we not. Or the mod that side. We're absolutely losing fields, but we're not, we would lose more fields if we were to follow uh, yeah, the as well. So. And the, the problem about being, you know, just viewable there on the street, from just fancy, maybe the area. We could have covered that and pretty that up. Yeah, and you'll see, you'll see from my sort of how it looks. Yeah, it, it'll be. And I guess what I wanted to show, if you're not real familiar with, with, with what's happening there kind of behind the trees across the street, you know, you can see architecturally they do have sloped roofs and, and clear, you know, entries and, and uh, you know, again, uh, the other building across the street, the um, senior center, same thing, pitched roofs, clear sense of entry. So uh, the building you kind of feel that behind it. So when we get to Mike's work, we're trying to remember the vision, and we can we'll see what we're talking about. South of the North Pacific Urban Drive Restoration Projects, again, uh, we're documenting the great and well, we did all of that as well. Chemical projects for the summer, uh, we are basically 100% complete. The cooling towers and the chillers at South, we have chiller up and running, we have a redundant chiller.
go to the installed layer, we can still open the space. The rubber treads are applied with concrete stairs, so that's not an issue. And the lights are replacing lights in time. So the existing lights will stay. When the new ones come, we'll officially come take out the lights and put the new ones in. So, so you're only going to have that open? Yes. And it's a tender song. Even with that, we'll open it and go back to the and just a couple of shots. Here you can see the old stairs that were underneath. And you can see that the new uh, wider stair that allows us to put a rail in the middle so people can go up and down either side on the minimum width of stairs required for the center rail. Uh, this was a concrete activity. Uh, they basically pumped it in, pumped it through, and then uh, placed it. So this was the bottom uh, row. And you would step up a landing down, up a landing down. This is often important flush. So now we get to the top of the section wall straight across the top. It's even more challenging with a group of people who don't know what's coming. And that's what was created tripping master people. So, um, and here you can see that the new stairs are in place. We're getting ready for benches to the paint. These lights will stay until the new lights come. And uh, railings will come in. It's all this uh, coated with the, uh, the new finish, the new color finish. Uh, the stairs have contrasting finish, so they stand out. It just comes to the right. Um, so it's, it's going on. Um, working the progress of it. I'm preparing the 1920 capital improvement plan, so in October next year, I'll be distributing those books. Um, there will be an update. I'll let you know what's new. Uh, I'll let you know what the five year plan looks like. And then in November, I'll come back with Phil to the joint. Uh, meeting with finance, and we'll talk about the cost of the projects, um, what we think we can afford, and uh, how they look at the five year projection. And Bill will be involved in putting them together. So we'll work together on all that. And I hope that after the November uh, back on the Newcom joint meeting at the board meeting, we can approve whatever the budget is for the summer projects so that we can engage our team to start the document. Um, you know, through the winter, which is what we typically do. And lastly, uh, the board of jack items, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike. The uh, Welsh PTO would like to donate a structure of the saw that restored wealth. It's about $15,000 donation. It's a nice, a nice thing, and uh, that'll be on the agenda. Uh, Urban engineering. Is the geotech for uh, Sol Feinstein. We need to get started with preliminary site investigations for the well to do some minor probing and make sure we work around the kids and recess and all those things. Uh, we need to do some soil sampling, stormwater management. We need to do some infiltration testing to see what the uh, ground conditions are so we know where we can put basins and not put basins and all those things. It's part of the budget for Sol Feinstein, it's not additional cost. I'd like to get them started before the board meeting. If I can just give them a week that it's okay, knowing that the board meeting will be okay. Uh, exactly. Are you asking for that now? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a change. Yep, good. Thank you. Construction waste management, uh, we have someone in place that's doing that with all the bills. We had an allowance of 60,000, but the budget was greater than 60,000 in our uh, actual overall project budget. So I need to um, approve an additional allowance amount of 70,000, I'm sorry, it was 70, an additional 60 to finish the product <coughs> recycling. If you recall, that is the <coughs> requirement that at least 75% of our, of our waste be recycled. The, the biggest run of this is done because we finished all the demo work, but there was a lot of uh, a lot more waste than I think we initially anticipated as part of that demolition process. There's a lot of uh, the roof we took up a lot of dumpster space and all that. So we will not necessarily use the 60, but it gives us the ability to approve those each month. So uh, that'll be the board agenda. Air filter supply bid is on the agenda, which is a yearly uh, bid. The uh, tractors, or the mowers, essentially, they come with uh, a snowblower. <coughs> Attachment, the mowing deck, the uh, lights, and the salt spreader. We try, we're trying to put one of these at each school. This year would allow us to finish getting these at each school so the maintenance mechanic has the ability to move snow, mower on the buildings, the islands, and things that they do. Um, 
And then after this, it won't be a two tractor a year thing. It'll be a maintenance of maybe one a year or one every two years, whatever we want to do. So that's part of our general maintenance budget that we have uh, in place. We had one bidder that was within $78 of last year's bid, so we feel uh, okay approving that. Uh, limited classroom renovation, that project was from the flood of north in 2018. We finally wrapped things up. We had to get some uh, heating, heating components done over the winter, and it just it kind of rubbed into 2019. But it's a credit of about 3600 bucks from that project cost. And then the other is the Newtown Middle School 53000 uh, piece that we talked about earlier. And that is about it in October. As I said, we'll give you another facilities update on uh, an update on where we are. Um, and then we'll uh, issue the, the distribute the five year plan and talk about the budgets for those as well. And then we'll remain here uh, to talk about facilities here. So we'll finish that discussion from two months ago. Uh, so, so, real quick before this, were there any objections to consent from the five of us here? No. Yeah. Just to make sure. Okay. Um, so, question for facilities use. Is there going to be a secondary? For further presentation, or are we going to just jump right into a discussion? How are you going to frame I, that up? I'm okay if we just touch on the you know the sheets that we had shown. We can okay, so there'll be some kind of refresher to lead up. It could just be a, a slight refresher. Yeah, whatever Mike thinks is best. Yeah. You know, right, I don't think we right have right. to start yeah. from the very beginning right. unless that's the desire. Of no, the no, no, just, just something to get us going. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if there was anything that you felt was missing from that last presentation that you want us to research in? Factor in there. I don't know about research. Though. We had some conversation at policy, a couple of policy meetings, and some other ones when you start talking about naming and sponsorships and things that aren't necessarily usage, mm -hmm. but tie into usage, right? So maybe you see if those are appropriate to tie into to this discussion. I think they might be. Maybe those those two policies are due up uh, next month, October policy. Yeah, we, we tabled two, right? Yeah. From this this month that had right. that had to do with that. Plus, you took naming, or you guys took yes. naming. Yes. Yep. So there's like three or four different things floating around. So anything that's got to do with sponsorships as these new things come online, if it's not used per se, but it is still has to do with facilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get to Robert on that. Yeah. that might be you, might be if you guys could find a way to tie all that stuff together. Yeah, we try to package all that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. The, the other one was the facilities use was more about fees, and I did yeah, yeah, yeah. I did modify that and it's been sent off to Robert Cox for a year or so. And then the other was on weed control, which I didn't fix. So we're good shape. Thank you. So with that, are there questions on what I presented? If not, I'm going to let Mike uh, do his thing. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, guys. So Michael Bell is with President Rickard there, but if you don't know, they did the Newtown Middle School, uh, which everyone, I think, uh, really loves. And they're working hard with us on the building uh, of the Chucks program, uh, Council Rock Starts. Not Council Rock Starts, come on. Right. That makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in a sense, like after speaking, you say it. It's just a set. It's a sign. Like you would say, you've got to raise the sign. So he had a sign right now, right? Cool. Who's talking? He's telling you. What? 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 So we spent about four hours going through room by room through the building, looking at case for furniture, talking about technology, marketables, categories, really going through, starting to get through those details on the project. Overall, the project progresses very well. We're having a lot of fun working on it. We're really excited about this. So, 
when we started the project, uh, site was primarily. So we wanted to get site plan developed so we could get the development so we could keep the overall content schedule on track. So our initial focus was one site. A couple of things that initially worked for us were one, trying to limit the impact to the athletic fields that are on site, maintaining as many athletic fields as possible. And two was <coughs> relocating the Western driveway to the, the former middle school to align with the township road. So we, we proceeded with that understanding. Um, as this is developed, the, the project's really impacting this baseball field on one side of the field. Soccer fields to the west here, and all the main fields to the south are all still, just all still being intact. So, what's that real distance between the edge of the soccer fields and the back of the building? Just for scale. I'm going to say about 70 feet. Pretty good distance. 25 yards, give or take. So, if I could just tell you, and then you asked about losing. Field. So on the very top, you see right in the parking lot, that was a field. And where the building is was a ball, baseball field. Right. So those are the two. But if you were to move the new lot to the west or slide our building to the west and put it to the east, yeah. you're losing those other two fields. So this respects. And there, I actually coached that on that field, which had the worst slope of the three fields. So uh, since we digress, let me ask you, um, have the Township committed to putting a traffic signal at the new entrance opposite their road. So they've indicated to us that they want a signal there, but we haven't had a formal discussion with the township yet at a public meeting. That's, that's, that's coming up next month. That that's the very bad intersection is currently exists. Yeah, when, uh, when Doug and I met with uh, the township manager and a couple of the other folks, they indicated right off the bat that they have been planning or desire to put a light in there. Right. So, um, and it's come up a couple other times in my conversations with Mr. Pellegrino since then. Great. So you can see in green, just to the right, that we would take out the old yes. drive and line. Sorry. Sure. Uh, as we work with the staff and have an understanding of, of the program in the building, uh, we develop initially we looked at the building as these two primary bars of space, what we call the program spaces, which are the spaces that each directly support and slum, which is why the chief program, and then there are the shared spaces, things like dining, nurses suite, mechanical spaces, things that support all the programs. Uh, the, the district is, uh, desired to have the one in one primary entrance to the building for everybody to come in for security. Uh, that's been located on the northeast corner of the building. And we're always concerned with uh, you know, making sure we have a safe flow of traffic and pedestrians on site. So with this layout, we're able to create a loop around the parking lot here for you know, drop off and pick up, and then a separate loop on the side for district transportation and for service to the building. And with having the entrance here, you can easily access the building from either one of those locations. So it keeps a, a nice separation of traffic and safe flow of people in the building. When we look at that, where we located the building on the site, you'll, you'll see here the distance from the building to Upper Hockey Road. Um, it's very similar to what you have with the library across the street, the senior center, the middle school, um, the parking, we have really just mirrored what they've done with the library across the street. So it's all an effort in the spirit of the village overlay to have this building fit into the context of, of the building. So as we develop the plan for the building, uh, again, we two, we, the program spaces on the left and the street spaces on the right, came with, you know, just ran a, a corridor towards south of the building, uh, very straightforward, very efficient. Again, we have the main entrance um, on the top right here, the northeast, or, uh, yeah, northeast corner for direct access from either the bus loading or the parking to bring you into that new corridor. Uh, the spaces here in blue and in purple represent spaces that support the Sloan and Twilight programs. The spaces in red and orange are the spaces that directly support the Achieve program. And then the green spaces in green represent those shared spaces. So there's a community room, conference room, a resource room, the nurses area, rec and dining, and mechanical and other support spaces. So is that, is that Twilight kind of 
in there in the, in the Sloan. So, so Chuck, question for you. Is that kind of how it works today? Is that the best spot for the Twilight program? Should that be moved away from the other two programs? Or was the thing you put in there? The Twilight program currently doesn't begin operating until the Sloan students are leaving. So they, they're, they can cope with us physically because they're not there at the same time. Okay. So from a program accident, we're providing an office and some storage for Twilight, but as far as educational space, they use the spaces that some of these are Yeah, okay. It also gives us the opportunity to use some of the materials that we have. Got it. Okay. So after developing the spaces within the program, um, some of the things that came out is very important. The staff and teachers in these programs work very, very closely with the students. And so one of the things that came out earlier was like any office spaces. They all want their office spaces in and amongst the educational spaces. It's not a uh, typical you know, elementary or middle school where you have an administrative suite off somewhere by itself. All of this stuff needs to be in and among the students. Um, there's important, it's important to have the intercommunication of spaces. Uh, visual effects of constant supervision of what's taking place uh, educationally. So both both, program, both of these programs have been, we provide a, a large group space in the center that then all the spaces work with. Each of those large group spaces are subdivided into two separate spaces. So we try to make spaces flexible with that different uses. So again, you know, the, the large group space is, is sort of the hub of each of the programs. Um, the classroom spaces are all organized around the perimeter of the building, take advantage both of the views out to the, the fields around the building and also the natural building. Yes. I have a question. Um, the classroom space specifically for the Sloan program, does that anticipate growth in the program? It does. We, we did um, incorporate a classroom space that we could use for Twilight if we needed to, and then also with the potential if we wanted to expand to middle school programming or something like that. And I would assume so if it were to be expanded to middle school that you would have some thought about where to position those students in relation to high school yeah, students. I'm, I'm just thinking you'll show us. Yeah. Yeah. Show. While you're talking about that, if we can expand within the district, if we wanted to bring either more programs in house or generate revenue from other districts to house similar programs, do we have the room to expand? I mean, is this a facility that can we, we build in space on the north end of the building here. We, we intentionally left space between the building and the parking lot to allow for expansion. So I guess, but how, what, what capacity will this building be at when it's open this way? Student-wise? Yeah. We would, we would always operate between 60 and 80 students. We, because it fluctuates so much during the course of the year, but we would max at 80. We typically start the year around 60. But what could the building hold as it's being built? Uh, that should be designed for. I'm not. Uh, I think actually we, we I know in some of our talks we talk about up to 100 as far as, as planning for four spaces and things like that. Again, I'm just trying to figure out if we've got flex exactly. if these programs yeah, grow too. Sure. Right? Exactly. You'd imagine they grow if anything, they're not going to shrink. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's a moderate level of flex, not one that can ever build, but yeah, it's there. But we also talk about some middle school program possibly. Yeah, that's what Chuck said. Yeah, we do have we do have that middle school. In. The middle school space has been planned. So here are the four, these four rooms along the left here represent the, the classroom that currently exists for the Sloan program. And there's this additional classroom on the end here that can be used for the middle school. And uh, Marianne, I'm not sure if that's what you were asking, but I I felt it was important for it to be amongst that group because. If we do expand, and I, and I can project the numbers that we would be looking at, we would have to share staff. It wouldn't be a whole separate staff that right. would be involved. So I think it's important that they're, you know, within the same proximity rather than someplace else. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I guess I'm just thinking more in terms of sort of developmentally appropriate Understood. putting age groups together. So this represents, this, this one I share with you. So as we're developing this project, we are working in three, three dimensions. So yesterday when we were meeting with the staff, we, we had all the drawings to look at. But as we were looking at the drawings, we were able to also walk through the building with the staff. So we can actually take them into the spaces. And it's just, it's a, 
just want to share with you. It's a wonderful tool that, that we were able to use. Um, it's tremendously beneficial to us and, and to the district. And, and it just helps everybody better understand how spaces will function. So let's talk a little bit about the village overlay district. And you know, as we started designing this building, thinking about the exterior appearance of it, and understanding you're in this village overlay district, um, this, this is a map of the village overlay. And one of the things we picked up on looking at it is that there really is a couple different conditions here. So there is obviously the town of Richborough, but that where, where this building is going to go, and really, a lot of this part of this village over is there's a lot of open and green space. So we really see it as there's, you know, there's the town, but there's also a very open park-like setting. You know, with, with all the athletic fields around the middle, the former middle school, all the athletic fields around uh, Richard Elementary, a lot of the wooded area in here. Um, so we, we sort of saw the duality there of a building that you know, is adjacent to the town, but also has a relationship with the park. So how can we, in the design of the buildings, reflect that? Uh, one of the first things we did, and I pass this little model around, but we, we looked at this, you know, and sort of reflecting what's happening on the inside of the building and created one sort of building mass here of the program spaces and then the shared spaces become separate elements. This is a, a rendering of, of this would be coming out of Upper Holland Road from so downtown Richboro heading, heading east. And, and this, this area represents the, the program spaces, the Sloan and Chief spaces. And so architecturally here, it's, it's a more of a traditional vernacular. It's brick facade, sloping roofs, um, you know, regular rhythms to the, to the window openings. Uh, we're looking at incorporating uh, the Council Rock logo up there underneath the side because I have been doing that on a lot of your projects, so we want to carry that through here and um, use that as an identifier. And then on the, the flip side of the building, um, here we took a little bit of a different take at it. We want this to be more modern and have more of a pavilion like feel to it. So, that, again, that relationship to the park. So, creating this very modern, um, welcoming entrance piece. And then down on the side here, having this pavilion effect, creating a nice overhang of the dining area. And, and so we feel like we're excited that, that, that duality of the sort of contrast in those two elements as it reflects the larger context um, really is making for a very interesting building. I'm not going to talk about that. This is just coming up on the road. A new driveway location. It's all your bus and district traffic if you're over left here. What's the key number of those? Well, that's just that's the core that runs the, that separates these two right. pieces. It doesn't, there's no sky yeah. So that, that CRSD there in blue, are we married to that, or is that just kind of an illustration? Um, we can change, you'll see that in another animation where we've updated that to say SAR. Okay, the only reason I asked, one of the pieces of feedback that we got from the community when we first started talking about relocating these programs years ago was in particular for Achieve, we didn't want it to feel school-like or too school-like, yeah. which is one of the reasons we didn't want to go to one of our existing schools. So, you know, while I appreciate we probably want to brand it CR, mm -hmm. anything that we can do to also keep it as professional as, as possible would yeah. probably be a good, a good thing. Yeah, you see the other one. That's exactly what I'm We'll get your feedback on it. So. Yeah. And before I go on to the next animation, I just want to and so we did create, uh, let's say, a notch on the roof to create an area to locate the air handling equipment for the building, the three air handlers. But that's also provided us an opportunity to provide some clear store lights into those large roof spaces on the inside, which you'll see in the next, the next animation here. So 
There is a casino at the start. On the right here, there's an existing statue at the current facility. Uh, it's a child on the rock. Straight ahead here is that is the community room. So for that, you can bring people into that space without them going into the rest of the building. So we come into the sump, <coughs> into the large group space. You can see that clear story. See, we're, put, see we're putting uh, apples in there, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt clearly hasn't approved this video. It's just concept. <laughs> Like the statue was a blonde. <laughs> just constant. You can see the smart boards have our uh, website on it. So this is just this is taking us in the one typical fashion. Number one, so I could do it. Space requirements needed to support the projects come and go. The spaces can adjust to that. So that that is the presentation we had. Great, marvelous. It's it's a nice building. So, so the slope of roofs I think really fit well with these programs. I think that actually addresses your concern. It doesn't feel like a traditional school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Have looked at that at all? June. They will see this. Uh, we were supposed to see them in September, but their agenda was they just were inundated with submittals and they hadn't, hadn't had a chance to really look through them. So we're going to October. So to that end, uh, remember that our plan is uh, to have this ready not for this coming school year, but the year after. So that next year we would have all the students who are in these programs into the former Richboro Middle School next year. So that means we would terminate the LSAT lease at the end of this year, stop paying that rent, uh, allow the students to be in the former Richboro Middle next year, and then slide into, into this building uh, the following fall. So I got to tell you, I mean, we've done some amazing capital work in this school district over the recent years. I am so excited about this one. I mean, these, these kids deserve it. The, the staff deserves it. Um, this, is, this is a win. And it's, it's fantastic, I think, from a fiscal standpoint. When you add up everything that we paid in, in rent and utilities through the years that now we own it, um, it's just, it's good the whole way around. So I want to thank Doug, thank Chuck for your programmatic leadership and all the Sloan Achieve and Twilight staff for their hard work. And Mike, of course, you as well. Uh, this is really fantastic. We did, we did have our Achieve back to school now that back to achieve night night last night and we didn't talk about this and the parents were just thrilled. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty unique. Yeah. Pretty unique. Especially one that you want yeah. you know that so two comments. One it's this is where two thousand thirteen there were six years off and started capital planning when this was one of the priorities. So congratulations to bringing it yeah. to the finality. And then, and then uh, one of the things Mark would always ask, and he's not here, so I'll ask it for him. If there's any way, especially given these kids are going to be in Richboro, right next door, to get them involved at different stages, I think, I think we had even talked about that, you know, whether it's the Achieve program doing something as part of the construction, or at least, you know, having them feel even a part of it that's coming on, that'd be just a great educational or experiential Piece. Absolutely. We're always willing to do that. And Dewey has been, uh, as, as the representative on site, has been really good at uh, on other projects, and bringing kids through on tours and educating them in, in different aspects of whatever it is, uh, 
you know, the school's teaching at the time. So we're we're happy to work with Chuck and his program to do that. And like you said, they were right next door. Yeah, and I, I don't I don't know if it fits. I don't know if it's appropriate. I don't know exactly how the chief runs, but if there's something that we can contract that crew out to do as part of the development of this building. We're, we're there. Because we'll, we'll do it. There's a lot that they can do. It's cool. not going to get in, in the way of, I don't think, any kind of agreement. Good. It'll, it'll be the same for the That's awesome. Day. They're talking about it as well. Good. It's exciting. It's exciting for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 this will be fun. Yeah, and I will just remind everyone that this will plan um, in terms of us being able to move these programs into the former RMS next year. We're on a tight timeline, so it's all contingent upon approval from Northampton Township. We did get delayed a little bit from September to October, so um, constant communication back and forth. But just remind the board, remind the public that we are under the gun from a timeline standpoint to be able to have this building ready for the start of the 21-22 school year. As you shared with us some of the conversation with LSAC, is that going well, fine? Yeah, it's very open-ended right now. Um, you know, we're at a point where we have a plan, but we're not sure, completely sure if we can execute on that plan. LSAC, likewise, uh, is, is a bit up in the air right now. So we're checking in with each other, the director of HR and myself. And uh, yeah, we're basically in wait-and-see mode, but open conversation. So it's, it's good. All right, any other board comments? How about any public comments? I, I, I apologize for not recognizing you. Do you want to state your name for the record? Kevin Campbell, Upper Makefield. Uh, just two comments that come to mind. One is uh, the access in and on the far side of the building from an emergency services standpoint looks quite tight. Uh, one side didn't look like it had much access at all. Um, coming off the roundabout in the rear could be a possible emergency entrance. Um, and then I would just always, as I typically do, Doug, I would challenge to look to more collaborative spaces where instead of just tables and chairs, we're more trending uh, in the educational system where they're having collaborative workspace for the students. Yeah, we, and as Mike said, we have, this is a perfect example of a room that facilitates Chuck's big open space program, but if there's a desire, we can pull the partition in the middle and make this two separate spaces. So this is a space that breaks down. We have another large space that does the same thing. And then we have a series of classrooms along the side. Um, this is six that turn into 12 or something. Three that turn into three that turn into three yeah. six. There's, there's a lot. So we have a lot of flexibility here. And uh, I like it. I mean, I, I love that. Even the, the common spaces are open and flexible. The cafeteria could be used for other things during the day. It's not just a cafeteria. Um, so it, it really does lend itself well to flexibility. I agree with you. But we're going to get furniture that that works the same way, that can be moved around, that can be pushed and pulled. And so. Are we able to go back to that slide that shows Kevin's first name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, emergency access. Yeah, we will absolutely take this to uh, to the police and fire teams as well. Uh, I just would be remiss if I didn't say it. No, it's a little bit from the um, dining area. Right? Pardon? Is this one you need to I think, I think that's what you were saying from the yeah. emergency access standpoint. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, so so coming in that new main program. drive, that I guess it's a right and a quick left looks very tight. Oh, God. I, if you look at the older building, there's two corridors that come, two roadways that come down either side of the building for access and on the rear. So um, we can look. There's a there's a couple things we can do. But I certainly wouldn't want to pave around the whole building. No, no. You're just talking about getting a big fire truck around there, yeah. right? God forbid. Yeah. And this well, one, yeah, is, and it might be multiple. You can you can hide things underneath the, 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 the uh, yeah we yeah. we did that at Holland Elementary School from um, from the edge of the lot through the ball fields to the main road to Holland mm -hmm. we had a stabilized access you can see uh, where it is if that's something we need to do we can provide that on the, the west side of the building. 
But all the internal drives are designed to facilitate fire trucks. Oh, they look, they look good. On the west side of the building, there is a much steeper grade coming up towards the building. Now. Yeah, there is. Anybody up? Fair enough, no sense. Thank you. 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 Thank